Good day, brothers and sisters. Today, I'll talk on the top number three, which is the proper attitude towards wealth and money. This is Brother Rudin Baca of BCBP Talisay. Proper attitude towards wealth and money. Is there a proper attitude for wealth and money? What is our manual is talking about? What is BCBP teaching talks about the proper attitude of wealth and money? The three highlights of this talk. Number one, what is our Holy Bible talks about the money? We'll, taking, we'll be taking a lot of Bible verses. Share it to you, brothers and sisters. Number two, we have to encourage stewardship about money and wealth. Stewardship. How to put it in the boat. Watch it. Watch it grow or spend it. These are the million dollar questions. Tanong na nag may ganting pala no? sa Ibisaya pangutan na nagtangag o dakong ganti encourage number three to enjoy the money and use it for God's glory three highlights of this talk first I have to introduce myself I was a former seaman I sailed around the world for 13 years. I was a crane building manager in Finland. I, I, I studied the crane building there. I used to be captain around the world for five years. I was a seaman. I started from the very scratch of a seaman world. Tagapintura, Tagalinis, and this is me. Gas gas na to picture na to. They say gas gas na. I love to show this every time I would talk. I love to show this to my kids. I work hard. I pass every stage. Na mo yung tayo ko nakapintura, nakakontrata pero pag uwi nakasamsonite. Gano naman tayo eh. No, we used to show what is not. When I was a Zeman, what we what were what we were doing inside the ship is beyond. You were, you would only see the tip of an iceberg. You know, so Bawal Samin is said prohibited to tell about this pintura, these works. Not only that, I used to splice wires, and that is me. Now a CEO of a company used to have rugs as my daily works and uniform. This is not a Photoshop picture. This is really a picture of what was happened before me. What was God's transformation? What was God's plan for me? At that time, I cannot even speak. At that time, I cannot even read some verses in Bible, I was there as a sailor. No, so, at that time, I was so attached with money because si man ako eh. So, as I, I told you, I, I became captain and chief officer at a very young age. I was chief officer at 24, 26 as a captain. And five years as a captain, I stopped sailing. In 2005, I stopped. Bakit? Marami na akong pera? No. But because, I, I save money, but because I have a different direction and God has a different plan for me. I never realized that one. Not until 10 years later that God has made me a different path for me to partake, to trudge. Not this path. This path of sinfulness, uh, away from family. Of course, di naman lahat, no? And it is this path, I've been, I've been there, done that. And, and I live a life of 
one day millionaire uh, so that's where I attach we were attached as a seaman alam mo sa seaman we have what we call low tide and high tide when we go home it's so high tide we have so much money our bags are full of money but when we are going to go back maybe two months later we call it low tide because we have this tendency to spend the money spend the money that we have now <laughs> this is the truth about money and wealth <laughs> and I like to share from a seaman life to a businessman life what has God transformed me in my attitude I could not see yet it is a proper but God guided me to a proper direction on what would be the right attitude in handling money and wealth wealth everything reaches from God nobody can deny it it is from him if you think it is your mother it is your father because you're old rich ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters you are wrong you are wrong wealth are from God these riches are from him I would say every thank you Lord for all these riches as the because at the click of his hand at the click of his finger he could say I will take out these riches for you and I now I like to establish this this is very important that wealth is from God if you accept that one that you are just a mere steward and God is the giver of them all, it would be easy, it would be easy later on to explain to you what would be our action and proper attitude towards wealth and money. Be fertile, the Lord says. Multiply and fill the air and subdue it. Have dominion, feast birds and all level things. So I give you every seed bearing plant, every tea to be your food. All animals, birds, all living creatures, all green ergonomic plants for good. Genesis chapter 1, 27-30. That God provided everything. The food, the land to live, the land to till. He provided everything. We accept it. Lord, thank you. Thank you for giving this to us. Because in Genesis you say, everything is yours. So God does not only provide us money. Wealth is in the form of His birds, living things and what we see. In my farm, I don't own these cows. I don't own this chicken, this guinea fowls, this uh, I, I love this one. I, say, I used to own no. God provided me this one. When I started a farm, brothers and sisters, in 2018, I have two farms. One in Sibunga, Cebu, one in Pangdan. I, I realized God is the maker. You know why? I used to run a business which is shipping, stevedoring, and trucking business. It's a logistic and shipping port operations if I want to operate 24 hours simple I will get my telephone and say boss I tell my foreman at the port double pay I want to work you 24 hours if I want to see in my farm these creatures for example I want to see eggs of my geese I cannot pay them money Oh my guinea fowls, I want you to lay eggs. So ca can I bribe them? No. It's not because everything natural is from God. Second, in Ecclesiastes 5.18, and whenever God, someone reaches on property with the ability to enjoy them and to find contentment to work, this is a gift from God. Gift of God you have to enjoy. When God gave us gifts, through our farms, when, when God give us gifts to our children, when God give us gifts to our wealth, whatever we have, whatever we have, we have to enjoy it. 
it is it is given that God wants it wants us to enjoy it with the entering the seed of God told I am giving you a land flowing with milk and honey houses that you know, that you, you did not build vineyards that you did not plant God gave it to you houses that we don't build farms that we don't make eggs that we don't pay uh, our cows make uh, <laughs> new cows again baby cows we don't pay our dragon fruit plantation they just off season giving us fruits because it is from God and God said you must enjoy and you must have wealth but what should be the proper attitude of doing that when you accept and you enjoy do you have the responsibility this is what the discussion will flow first I would say that heaven is the heaven of the Lord but the earth he has given to the children of men Psalms 115 verse 16 heaven is heaven but the earth this earth we must enjoy and we must live because he has given to us ramification of God's gift you know, so one day you say sinners or not sinners they have gift it's a truth it's a fact look at the sunshine okay for example the sunshine I give you this example it's gonna break it's gonna bright sunny day why because it's shining to all people sinners saints or not this is ramification of gift when God give gifts it's for everybody when God give the wealth and the nature it's for everybody it's not given to me because I am a busy BP it's not it's for everybody God is the source of all gifts there's no other source but him and we have to acknowledge that one. we have to thank Lord thank you thank you remember Job when Job was tested he said this is really my favorite verse when even when I was young he said God you have given me everything and you have the right to take me out the Lord has given and the Lord has taken out this is the first understanding I would like to employ to all of us God is the source of gifts therefore he owns everything he owns everything because everything is from God and we are just a steward three things God's love the abundance and God's generosity how do we act on it how do we act on this abundance or generosity God's love to me to you how can you transfer the God's love to other people that God's love is manifested through your wealth and money whatever you have right now the God's abundance is is from the wealth of money that whatever you have right now also and the third thing is taking you it's not God's generosity but you must be generous enough to give also to others it's not because you like only to take every blessing it is from God it is not from you we don't realize that until we lost the blessing Lord please give me this one but when God has already granted your request you forget him already when I was still sailing we used to give allotments to our wife or at that time when I was single to our mother and every time they ask money from us we think we are the king maker already we, I, I thought I was the breadwinner already I was sending children to my, my, my siblings to school so when I go home you're like a king but it should not be a situation I see my bank book every day I still have this laminated the bank book and I was still single 
withdrawal every day, withdrawal every day. Not from it. Not one of it and given to church. Because it is the attitude that is being shaped into my mind at the time. Wealth and poverty also is God's giving. Now, in God's grace, His grace will tell you today, Rudin, you'll have wealth. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you for these eight companies that you have given to me. With around 800 people that I have managed. But tomorrow, Rudin, we lost the client and you'll be poor again. Please, Lord, please. I lost my face. I'll be embarrassed. This is our culture. We are afraid to lose something that we don't own in the first place. Remember I told you, it's God's wealth. We're just the one. The Lord has given. The Lord has taken away. Everybody, every businessman passed the pandemic. It's so challenging for us. Some businesses that we have to maintain this is just for the sake of our people we just keep it for the sake of the people not for profit for our employees easily during pandemic i could say i just fold for some companies take not the risk from pandemic for another two to three years but what good it will give it to me what it good it will teach to my children leaving behind the people that worked for me for many years help the company grow and leave them behind you know our companies we are involved in logistic services and during pandemic time even though these are essentials but our volume was down we're down we have different challenges. We cannot cross from one place to another. And our expenses rose up. Some of our operations will even stop. But God, we just pray, Lord, we were there in, in good times and we're there to serve you. We just stay what whatever you have. Take this anytime. It's, it's in our hands. Take it. If you want this to give it to be given to somebody for them to survive, we'll make it. That kind of mentality took us years to understand because the world stewardship. There were unjust money that we have to talk about. The things that we use in unjust operations. These are the things that God really forbid for us. Because God makes already occasions for us to earn honestly. And why we show these unjust money operations that could only create injustices to one part or another. I am running ships. I am selling vessels. There are times that due to the essentials of time, we have to pay something. But that is necessity, evil of the operations. Like if I, will, I, if I would not pay, there are like thousands of people waiting in the next port for a few thousands of pesos. This is what we call necessary evil. For Otherwise, you will be whole for one year. This is justice that we're talking about. How you can manage, how we're going to survive, and how we're going to balance those people who depend on our operation. God's gift, and what is your response? When God gives you gift, my first question, what is your response? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for the new cell phone. I'm going to call my girlfriend. Use. Is that your response? When God gave you a gift, Lord, thank you. I have now more karaoke money to do. I go with my Japanese friends and play golf next day. What is your response? Or when God gave you a gift, would you ponder 
Why, Lord, a lowly sailor, a painter in the ship, you gave me this gift. What is your plan? I cannot even speak English at the time. Lord, what is your plan? You want me to be your messenger of your word in a different arena? I'll be there. What is your response? That is the first question. Rewards, not a yardstick for success. Okay. You, you, you think you are successful and you are rewarded of good works. It, it doesn't work that way. There must be a plan that God prepare you something. It's not because you're successful because you study all the time that you burn candles when you're in college. Then all these rewards and success you owe to yourself. No. God has a plan for you. That's why He has given you a gift. What is your response? What is your proper attitude to His gift? The wealth and money. This is the talk all about. I used to say this one. Everybody has this own satisfaction glass. My satisfaction glass is as big as picture. That picture. But the satisfaction glass of other people, of my friends, is just this one. And he would say to me, bye, Rodin. I'm just okay. I don't need more. It's okay to me to eat breakfast, to fish every day. I don't even need a cell phone. I have my family. That is a satisfaction glass. How about you? Me, I need more. Because it's not me only. God's gave us something. God's gave you resources. And God wants you to work not only for yourself, but also for others. The satisfaction glass is not a measurement for yourself. It is a measurement also for others who don't even have a glass. If I'm a homeless man glass, homeless man That is satisfaction glass. Genesis 1, 28-31, it's about creatures, the gods, the paradise that God gives. We have to acknowledge this one. In Wisdom 6.3, it's the society acts. Society acts in different way. What is the different reaction of society with God's goodness? And what is your reaction to the society's responses? Because you will be shaped by the society's responses. You know, Matthew 25 talks about profit. Matthew 20 about distribution of money. Luke 16 is you have to win for God. 1 Timothy 6 is you have to give for the poor. You know, for many years, we asked God what to do with the excess. But if you, people like me, at first they say, I don't have excess because I have a picture of container to fill. But if your proper attitude, if your attitude is not yet proper, you cannot see the excess. For 16 years, we'll be giving a lot of gifts every Christmas for people you don't know. I, I don't need to share this one, but I like to share this to you for the, for the point of making this one. And my children would ask me, even at the time of Odette, two years ago, 2021, when we lost millions of pesos in farms and operations, people around you know, thousands of them lined up in the early morning of Christmas, still waiting for the gift. What should you do? Should I say sorry because I'm just a victim? Or should you pack your gift and give to them? I did what I had to do. I said, Lord, you have taken a parcel of the resources that you've given to me, but I am better than them. So I gave what what's I usually do for the last 16 years. That is something I'm very proud of. For my children, until they are now very big, they have to realize that whatever they have, 
you have to distribute whatever you profit you have to distribute and you have to give it to the poor and you have to win it for God these are the verses all about because in Matthew 5 16 he said everything you do God will be glorified you give something and you don't glorify God because you're just running for politics God is not glorified you'll glorify yourself at the end of the day brothers and sisters we have accountability and this accountability is not for your boss but for our big big biggest boss boss these are the things that you have interested me I work for it I shared it and the interest of working it I work it for my perspiration you can pay money and distribute foods or pay money to attend your BCBP activities maybe send a representative from your office can you do that no because it's it's a personal commitment it's an accountability stewardship <laughs> stewardship or gifts is very important attachment and detachment are the key words 10 years ago no, now it's 2023 10 or 12 years ago, I was just a simple employee of a, of a Japanese company. Three years later, in 2014 or 15, I made companies already. Started with four, five, six, seven, and eight companies. And things were very good. Contracts after contracts, impossible contracts that I cannot even imagine. I signed a multi-million contract even without an office at that time in 2014 and later. Why? Because God gave me a gift and He wants me to steward it. But together with the steward of His gift is responsibility. And he gave me the stewardship for, for late projects. Attached are the 200 people that I have to take care These are the stewardship we're talking about. Your responsibility. Making kingdom for God. You are architecting picture for Him. You're making businesses for Him. Then you have a responsibility. That is the responsibility that we have to practice. It's not you have to accept the gift and you have no response the proper attitude of wealth is to ask God can after this wealth what shall I do shall I go to karaoke again of course not or maybe I could pay maybe I could have girlfriend already because you can afford that and then see one person is that when they have so much money they can play golf already every almost every day and they have to, nothing to do with their money. He said, I can afford, I can do it. I can have a girlfriend and, and the greenness will come in. You're not even giving the right uh, salary already for your employee. You're giving them not the right benefits. You're not taking into consideration what they are doing. Then that is the time that God says, my low steward. You're not the one that I should trust with this money. You're talented, but you don't know how to, to take care of the money that I have. You don't have the management of wealth because it calls for responsibility. And that responsibility is in you. God is taking care of us because He believes that you are responsible enough. You are responsible enough to take care of His people talking about that profit I showed you already the distribution of profit the excess the sharing and the glorifying of God of your action the love of money is the root of all evil when God gave me the money it crossed to my 
my many times I could do everything. Well, I could hide one or two few girlfriends. I could hide maybe two houses. But I asked the Lord, Lord, I came from a very poor family. Where, can, where my parents cannot even buy me a pants when I was when I was elementary. I lost my father when I was seven. But you made me a multi-millionaire with many businesses. Money that I don't want to take. But I want to partake to, to share for your kingdom and glory. It does that I don't need it. But I I said there must be something with it. I asked God why this is so many. And and, and this is more than enough. But what what I asked for? Because he said, I am waiting for your response. The proper attitude towards money and wealth is to say, Lord, what should be my response? Should I sing, stand by me again in the karaoke? No, of course. His response is to do civic works, is to do religious works, is to extend yourself, is to multiply yourself, is to do the works of God through you. You will be His ambassador because you are given. You, it's, it's given these riches, you know, the money, this attachment, and you will be forced to, you will be forced and, and sucked by this one. No. Because attachment is the real danger. You must learn how to detach, to hold, hold, hold. Because this is a dangerous preposition. Remember, God gave you something. And God is testing, testing us that what we do with wealth and, and money that we have. We can easily close our door by BCBP. We can just buy a property in Madrid or buy a property in, in you know, in Europe now opening. Uh, if you buy properties 20 to 25 million, it's easy. You'll be a citizen already. But how can you see the suffering of the people if you're, if you're there? How can you see, how can you participate in the community of the if you're there? You see only yourself. Again, we're going back to the picture and the glass. I tell you, the glass I tell you is that it's filled up. I'm okay, but I am an unfilled up pitcher. I am a half filled pitcher. I want to be filled up more, not to lose my money. I have to be filled up more with the purpose. The proper attitude is what is your purpose with the milk and money that you have. You know, I've been teaching in United Nations as a lecturer. Trading. I used to it that I, I've seen a lot of around the world what the people need, and it's it's not about money. It's about trade. It's about giving works. Uh, I've been a lot of countries as United Nations speaker, maybe more than twenty years to be exact, and and to be a speaker and to be there. And to have experiences to around 80 to 90 countries. Uh, what is my responsibility? What is the stewardship once God wants me to do? I am just attached to wealth and fame. Can I detach from it? You know, when we have the wealth, when, when our businesses started to, to go down and our cash flow started to drain, uh, for some people, when we lost properties due to typhoon or death, maybe for some people we say, hey, sorry, I have to close this one, I have to close this one, I have to close, and regroup as an economist. I have a PhD in management. Okay, I have an MBA in, in London, so I have all these tactics to say. But never it is taught in, in my PhD, never it taught in my MBA that there is people behind the business. And, and 
and it should not be behind. It's in front of the businesses that you do. Because the businesses makes profit, and the profit you have to distribute, and the distribution must glorify God. I showed that to you later, a while ago. That is the great purpose, that is the proper attitude toward wealth and money. Amount is not important, but important is how to use it. Whatever your talents, whatever your wealth, it is very imperative how to use it. The Bible, the Holy Bible, have a lot to say. God will hold us accountable during the end of time. Matthew 25, 30. God will hold us accountable. The wealth is a gift of God for the betterment of society. Danger is attachment. That's why I tell you, how I can detach from all these things is a challenge. Lord, I cannot detach easily. But His message, our participation with BCBP community, our daily prayers, prayers will teach us that there must be a detachment from all these things. We must be like Job saying, the Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Gifted are called for to make a divine vocation. They are good stewards. They go for the homeless. They give this one. They give money. We are called also to, to make a divine vocation. We help the poor. We make a stewards. We make missionary works. Most of all, we make more Christians because Christians are like us. And these are mission works that we have to do. We are not owners, but only stewards of God's properties. Every day, I would say everything. I lost a bidding. I'm not a steward. I'm not the owners, but steward of God's properties. Every time I have a loss of property, you know, I, you know logistics, sometimes our dump truck bump something, our prime over bump lost something. Uh, motor pole has a big engine issue. I am the owner, says the Lord. You are the stable. Take care of the things that you have been taking over. Now, one day I'll take that from you. You should not cry. Would you cry? Of course not. Faithful stewardship. Spiritual poverty means joyful and concerned for possession. I'm praying for this. My kids, I, I have farms that I train them. And I train them on the family is trained on on humility on on the proper understanding of what you have not on the social things not on the cell phones not on the morals and everything if i could partake to my family and to my friends the faithful people especially that's why i'm making this this uh, this lessons a discussion because i have to share what is my understanding and my real experience of a faithful stewardship? Simplicity, you know, give for God, and you have to manage. We lost something, but we try to save. I lost something, but God, even coins, we just say, God, this is from you. Wealth available to others. We still continue to help. We just trust and leave everything to God. You know, I just had my angioplasty three weeks ago and the cost was tremendous and we have cash flow problem with our companies we have volume problems on our clients and still I am here and there were days and there were nights that I worry but I read something that says 365 times the Lord says do not worry do not worry trust everything to God you know the wrong attitude the wrong attitude towards wealth and money is you worry that you lost your money I pray to God that I should have the proper attitude of not to worry because he said 365 times do not worry about tomorrow do not worry just trust me have faith 
you know, I, I, I used to, I used to tell this one, uh, and this story of, I went to, I have a talk of United Nations in Indonesia a month ago, last week of January, and, and 2023, and, and, you know, the airport are full of Muslim. And this guy, this guy, has a tattoo I see among the Muslims, one of them at the back of his hand and said, I see a 141.10. God said, I'll be with you. I'll be there to encourage you, to strengthen you, to raise your right hand. A month later, I was admitted to an angioplasty operation and I can hear his voice. It's first time I was hospitalized. First time in my life. Never been in dextros, no? Never been in never been in hospital bed. So I told the Lord, <laughs> this is new to me. But he said, I say here for to one dead. I am with you. I am here to strengthen you. I am here to raise your right hand. You know, what's good with that word, with these verses, is that, dude, Isaiah is really 41.10. So do not fear, he says. Do not fear, he says. Do not fear. Do not worry, he says. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is the right hand where angioplasty is being made. And when, when I remember those words, I would say, Lord, you told me already a month ago. And there should be no worry for me. But I'm still worried because we are human beings. And God said, why are you worried? The trees are not worrying. The flowers, they are done now and they go back tomorrow. They don't worry. Why are you worried? Because of all the leave, the, the creations of the Lord, only people worry. We don't trust Him. He said, do not worry. You know, I, I just I shared this something to you, to you about this don't worry thing because this really touched me in, in this one. Don't, don't worry thing. I would say, when God says, when God says, do not worry about tomorrow, He says, this is my job to worry about tomorrow. Just tell today. And every day I'm living every day like this. Lord, it's your job about tomorrow. You tell me that. Peace. Peace. Part of your job, take care of me. I just pray for you. Last said, the Lord said, cast your burdens on me. Do not worry. Leave about tomorrow. That's my work. He says, can you do that? Can we do that, brothers and sisters? Can we do that? Of course we can. Amen. Generosity Index. Okay, some of us are not so generous. They're just giving, uh, this pouring this wine. Some are people are like generous already, uh, pouring a little uh, as big as this. Some people they are really kuripot, no? They are so stingy. They can just give a cup of coffee. Some people can even give a barrel. That is generosity and nature of people. You have time, you have your treasure, you have your talents, this are your wealth. What is your generosity index? What would be the proper attitude you have towards your wealth and money? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say in what way have you robbed you in tithes and offering? Malachi 3 and 8. You know, I love this verse, you know. <laughs> and I love the picture also. You see, are we robbing God? 10% of what we have. Another sharing I have that since 2014 we we tried to send uh, contemplative nuns to different schools. We cannot even count already. And you may see her in Carmen, and we give tremendous, consistent amount of donations 
every month. And when, when COVID came and when the test of our company came, the first question we had with our company, with, with my wife, is that should we stop this one? But, but those were the times also that those nuns really need our help. It is the first time that we can uh, we can receive the text that making follow up of the donations that we used to give monthly basis. So should be be the right attitude towards your wealth and money. How much you can share? What is your generosity index? If you have ten and you give five, your generosity index is. 50%. If you have 10 and you give 1, your generosity index is 1%. I have known Americans, not even Christians, not even Catholic. They have 10, they have given 9 every time. Their generosity index is 90%. What is yours? Well, I'm here. I'm done. And the discussion starter, it is now here in my back seeing and judging what are the gifts of creation god want me want me to enjoy what does god want me to enjoy what does god want me to remove because they lead me to see what does god want me to give up and sacrifice or love of him how can we grow in being effective stewards of god's wealth and resources entrusted how can we grow in gratitude and generosity and entrusting god over our material livelihood needs in growing in spiritual poverty or simplicity, what are the basic genuine needs? What are the wasteful attitudes do I have? So these are reflections. If I were to do only three, what are the three outward expressions of simplicity? Mention that I will prioritize first. What are the next two or three? List down ways or given a present condition on how we can make our own money, wealth, and resources available to others. Brothers and sisters, thank you very much. I am Captain Rudian Faka, and I am a businessman from BCP Pitalizai. Thank you for seeing this talk on the proper attitude towards wealth and money. God bless all of us. May God protect you all the time and your family. Good day.